Yes, my dudes, I'm Alex, and thanks for checking out another video. I got some good news today, mate. So I got the email from UPS, let me know that the replacement camera is gonna be coming at some point this weekend. So next Wednesday, we'll get into a few more tunes, but for today, let's answer a few more questions. So the next question has been sent over by my man, Sonny OC. And Sonny's asked the question, how do you start to involve your snare drum when you're playing a jazz beat? So you mentioned that you've got the main beat down, but you're slightly unsure of how to start using your snare drum and your hi-hat. So I'm gonna assume that when you're talking about a jazz beat, you're talking about your kind of traditional jazz beat. So today, we're gonna to start to use our snare drum in a bebop context. So the first thing I'd recommend is go and listen to the Music Man. You're gonna learn a lot more by listening to the classic albums, those classic drummers, than any drum lesson could ever teach you. So I would go and have a listen to Tony Williams, Elvin Jones, Max Roach, Roy Haynes, Art Blakey, Jack Dijonette, and I know that there's a lot of bot fans that watch this channel, so feel free to also leave some recommendations down in the comments below and let everybody know who's your favorite bebop drummer and why. But listening to these drummers is gonna give you an opportunity to start hearing this vocabulary and context and really start to soak it in. The second thing I would personally recommend is get hold of this book if you can. It's called The Art of Bop Drumming by John Riley. And honestly, man, I've learned so much by going through this book. So not only does he take you through loads of different exercises on jazz comping, he also teaches you how to approach soloing over a form. And at the back of the book, he gives you an extensive listening list where he breaks down exactly what's happening in loads of different tunes from classic albums. So for me personally, that book was an absolute game changer and I can't recommend it enough. But what I will say is that if playing this style of music is totally new for you, it does start off in a slightly more advanced place. So what I'm gonna teach you today is a couple of exercises to just get you started with incorporating your snare drum in a kind of bebop groove. So to get started, we wanna make sure that we're really confident with playing jazz time. And when we're talking about jazz time, we've got our ride cymbal pattern, which is based around triplets. So you've got a quarter note, and then the first and last triplet of the group, and that repeats. So if I click it out on my sticks, you get one and a two and a three and a four and a one. And you mentioned adding in the hi-hat, so for now, we're just gonna keep our hi-hat foot firmly planted on beats two and four. So that's gonna sound like this. So I'm sure that a lot of you have played that before. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna play our bass drum on quarter notes and we're gonna do what's called feathering the bass drum. So when you're feathering the bass drum, you're gonna play your bass drum as quiet as you can, as light as a feather. And what we're looking for here is for our bass drum to sit really, really nice and low, really nice and quiet in the mix. So that's gonna sound like this. So you should be able to just about hear it. And in the art of bot drumming, John Riley talks about how that feathered bass drum should be felt but not heard in an ensemble setting. So when it comes to adding your snare drum in there, what I'd recommend is just going through each of the different eighth note triplet permutations to make sure that you're feeling confident with how each of those sounds. So again, what I'll do is click them out on my stick, but you're gonna start on the downbeat, then you move to the second triplet, then you move to the third triplet, and then it's just every combination of those until you play no triplets at all. So that's gonna sound like this. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. So now let's see if we can play our jazz time and we're just gonna play each of the different eighth note triplet permutations on the snare drum. So there we've got each of our different permutations. And again, if this is brand new for you, 
to play them all in a row like that might take a bit of work and it might be a bit intense. So the next thing I'd recommend is just to choose one of those permutations and see if you can start to create some phrasing with it. So for example, let's take the third triplet, one and er, uh, two and er, uh, three and er, uh, four and er. Uh. So we don't have to play that every single time. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play our jazz time and every so often, I'm just gonna bring in only that placement on our snare drum and see if I can create some phrasing with it. Here we go. So nothing too crazy there, but hopefully it's starting to sound nice and musical. The next thing I'd recommend is take that same placement and now let's see if we can add some dynamics in there. So sometimes I'm gonna play it as a ghost note, sometimes I'm gonna play it as an accent, and sometimes I'm not gonna play it at all. So that's gonna sound like this. So we're just playing the same ideas really, but now we've just got a bit more of a point of interest for the listener and for the soloist. So I'd recommend having a go at this with each of the different permutations, and then when you're feeling confident, you can start to combine them. So I'm just gonna improvise a short idea where I'll play a mixture of our different snare drum placements and see if I can create some musical phrasing. Here we go. So what I played there was quite busy, just to make sure that I've got a few different permutations in there to demonstrate them to you so you can hear how they sound. But you can get a lot of mileage out of just using a couple of these options at a time. So experiment and have fun with them, but remember that the end goal is for it to sound nice and musical. So this is a good starting point, but as you grow in confidence, remember that you don't always have to feather your bass drum on the quarter notes. You don't only have to stick to that standard jazz ride cymbal pattern. You don't only have to play your hi-hat foot on two and four. You can get as experimental and creative as you wanna get with this stuff. And as long as it supports the music, the options are unlimited. So I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into how to start using your snare drum in a jazz context. Thanks for sending over your question, Sonny. Let's go on to the next one. For question two, quite a few people sent over similar questions. So I've condensed it down into one answer. So before we get in there, quick shout out to a person, only for crap and Aditya Sagar. You guys all sent over questions to do with practice routines, warm-up routines, and any favorite exercises. So I don't have any really strict particular practice routine, and I don't have any exercises that I consistently play every single day, or any exercises that I've been playing every day for years, or anything like that. But there are a few key elements to my practice, and there's a few little tips that I'm gonna give you that for me have really helped me to make progress over the years. So for me personally, in terms of a warm-up routine, I just play drums, mate. I get on the kit and just start playing, but I do definitely try to not play anything too strenuous or too fast or too hard for the first maybe 15, 20 minutes and just make sure that I'm getting into the groove, warming my body up, warming my mind up. But to be really honest, I don't do any snare drum or pad workout before I start working on my main practice. I just get straight on the kit and play along. Sometimes I might play along some music, but a lot of the time I'm just playing the drums by myself. Now, when it comes to my main focus practice, honestly, mate, I just try and have one or two things that I focus on at a time. I tend to find that if I work on too many things at the same time, I tend to just make a really small and slow amount of progress on a few different areas rather than really focusing on one or two and making a lot more progress on something that I really wanna get good at. Now what these topics are, is gonna be slightly different for everybody, but my advice would be stick to them until you start to make that progress that you're after before you switch on to the next one. And of course, sometimes you might just try something out and maybe after a couple of days, a couple of weeks, after all, you're not feeling it that much and that's totally cool. Get rid of it if you're not hyped on it. See if you can start working on something else. But the commitment to the one or two things that you really wanna work on is all I'm trying to stress here. The next section of my practice is I'll always just try and improvise with the concepts that I've been working on. So maybe in that main focus bit of practice is a proper grind. You know, that's the really hard stuff that might take 
a few days, a few weeks, a few months to get used to the coordination. But whatever I'm starting to feel that bit more confident with, I'll see if I can work on some grooves or some fills, or it depends what I'm working on, where I start to bring those concepts into the vocabulary that I already have on the kit. I find that by doing this, I'm always working on improvisation and it keeps those ideas a bit more fluid rather than keeping them stuck in a box where I don't really know what to do with them. And honestly, this is only something that I've started to do over the last couple of years. But for me, I found that it's really helped me to work on my fluidity on the kit and to expand my vocabulary. The final little tip I'm gonna give you is I always have a few little brain breaks to work on. Now, what I mean by that is sometimes when you're working on that main focused practice topic, it can be a little bit intense to do, say, half an hour without any breaks whatsoever, just half an hour of focus practice. So what I'll tend to have is a few smaller concepts that I'm working on where if I need a little break, rather than going and watching YouTube or chilling or whatever, I'll just have something else that I'm also working on, but it's usually something that doesn't need quite as much work. So, for example, at the moment, I'm working on a Marcus Gilmore beat and I've got the beat down and I'm just about at the tempo with it, but it still needs a bit of tidying up. So I don't need to spend a whole practice session working on this beat because I can already play it. But if I'm getting a bit tired of what I'm working on, or I'm starting to lose focus, I'll maybe just work on that Marcus Gilmore beat for a couple of minutes and then get straight back into that focus practice. This might not work for everybody, but I found that my concentration just won't last all the way through a really long practice session. So having these little brain breaks can really help me to make some progress. Thanks again, dudes, for sending in your questions. And I hope that this has given some insight into my practice routine. And out to everybody who sent in a Q&A question. As of next week, we're gonna go back into breaking down some tunes and some sick licks from our favorite drummers but I reckon I'll open up the Q&As again in a few months time. If you're digging the videos, hit the button to join the Wednesday crew, man, and feel free to leave a track recommendation for the Drum Hub Jukebox playlist down in the comments below. I'll see you next week.